All right, little break in the rain. Pretty serious. Like that used to be 20 meters down the hill, and uh, it's now creeping. Uh, I reckon we're looking at from where I am down to that waterline about four meters. I reckon that's at least 150, 200 meters across. You can see it in the background there, just sort of churning away. And it's creeping right up on the house. So, it's moving pretty fast. And it's stacked up. Just up to here, it used to drop off down and driving. And now you can't even see the roadway. There is no roadway, it's gone. So, a little bit concerned that if this rain keeps up, it might keep rising. And we're fucked. We're totally fucked. Like we're stuck. There's no getting out at, at all. The river's up over there, and the river at the gap is probably 10 metres deep by now. And this is an unexpected 100 year storm, basically. 100 year storm watching the river fly past. <laughs> and um, just trying to survive. They're over there just trying to raise everything up off the ground, just in case. I mean, tonight might actually bring this up. And then we're underwater. We're completely underwater. And I don't know what to say. Like, there are people down the hill already that their houses are underwater. So, you know, that's two or three neighbors down the road and they've lost everything. So, something hard to look at. I don't know what everybody else is suffering, but it's been seven days without the sun. It's been hard slog of rain. It's been the hardest rain I've ever experienced. And I've traveled this whole land, experienced all sorts of monsoons and stuff. Oh, I've never experienced anything like this. This just hardcore, unrelenting, Biblical, prehistoric, hardcore rain. And it's put fear into a few people around here, including myself. This might all go underwater and we've got nowhere to go. Look, we've got to recede up to the little mound on the hill over there. And if we have to do that in the middle of the night, like fuck. Like fucking hell. So I hope this just keeps flowing. We, we hope this keeps flowing and this rain relents. We, we hope that it slows down and the sun kind of pushes it along. Otherwise, we're watching... I don't know how everyone else is suffering in the area, but I'm hearing stories that there are people pulling their hair out right now. So, there you go. It's a, a lake, a total lake, which is well, I guess, which is well. I'll give you a report back later, if this rises any further. I mean, we're only looking at two meters, three, four meters five to the house but look how fast it's moving like they take the house away oh i don't know what to say i'll show you in a sec but about half an hour after i recorded that video we had a break in the rain and about an hour and a half after that, it was like someone pulled a plug and the whole lot came draining out. We watched the waters recede very, very quickly within minutes and disappeared behind the hill in the tree line there. And that was a lot of water. I, I mean, it was moving 100 kilometers an hour and it was dragging everything with it. Yeah, I'm just waiting to be a, a chopper. It's still raining. I'm going to stop raining and see the clouds behind us there. But a chopper flew down the street.
this down the end of the street here, um, this devastation, this complete, absolute devastation. Um, some of the properties have been, it's like Niagara Falls have just come through your property and taken everything into the neighbor's property. And there is stuff strewn all down the creek line down the back here. Um, there are bits and pieces from people's homes all down the back of the property here. Don't know what to say. Don't. Like I knew the wet season was coming, but that. You can feel the wind behind me and I've got the rain pattering down on me. That was scary. That, that was actually scary. I've never ever felt rain so heavy, continuous, for days on end. Uh, like days. Well, we just suffered six days of insanity. Like absolute insanity. Uh, you'll see soon. I'm just going to wait for this chopper to come flying back. But um, I bet you they're picking up people that are stuck on their roofs down there. Because what I've seen three doors down is just... So sad. I don't know what to say. I'm lost the work. It's... I mean, it's just starting to settle now, the fog on the mountain. And the clouds are starting to drift away. It's day eight of no sun. So, this is what we're seeing. Grey, black, black. And rain so heavy. Cut. I mean, look at the green. It hasn't soaked away yet because the ground is so wet, it's got nowhere to go. It's literally got nowhere to go. Um, but I drove 100 metres that way and the culverts cut out. I drove 200 metres that way, the culverts cut out. So we're landlocked. There's no way out. There's no way into town. There's no way to... I've heard trucks going down the highway in the back. So the highway is open. So I've heard uh, semi-trailers moving but uh, as far as everyone else uh, guy next door's caravans down probably in the sea by now managed to get the car out managed to um, I was oblivious to this until yesterday so people have been in panic stations up and down the valley here and we, we were just hoping that the water didn't lap up over that hill and um, here I can hear it. I right, tell so we were just lucky. Uh, otherwise, this would be flooded. All of this would be underwater right now. I mean, we were, I, I'd say, four metres away from this being a lake. Mm, here it comes like a little bell chopper with big glass front. So, I, mean, I can't get down there. No one can get down there to really have a look. There's two or three properties that look like they're in good condition. There he goes. He hugged the road on the way in. About 20 metres above the road. All the way down the road. Uh, I dare say they're taking people to be rescued. Find out in the coming days. Distressing, I tell you, distressing.
time, this is where we were before, and that's not a river now. You can't even see the edge of the river. I can hear it, it's moving pretty quickly still. But um, that little bank down there it used to be a road and it's not anymore. I mean, I think you'll find that when you get around that corner there, there's so much mud there, you can't even see the road anymore. It's gone. It's like totally gone. It's back to bushland again. And then down this side, this roadway down the fence line here, uh, it's a total mess down the bottom. It's not a road. It's a pile of mud. Straight that much mud in there. But all of this filled up. All of this filled up and the river is over there. Right, and we were at four metres in front, height-wise. I reckon we're about four metres. So, yeah, and if that four metres had a breach, it would have filled the whole entire block. Like, that would have filled it flat up here. And then that river's come down from the neighbours and taken the neighbour's house out, taken the caravan out next door, dragged all their belongings down here. So when you walk down there, you just see it. Sad. I just... This more went underwater. Everywhere I go, these things happen. It's Australia, I suppose, but... This was epic. This was completely epic. I, to have your home be taken out by a hundred kilometre an hour river in the middle of the night. To run. And then to go back and... It's not a cyclone that picked up all your stuff and threw it around in the wind. But that's so much water, you can't even fathom, fathom where it came from. This is the point that I'm just trying to make here. Like, you can't even fathom how all of that filled up. Like, I'm easy 40, 50 metres above the creek line right now. I just, that, that would have been a kilometre across last night. The road out here is cut in so many different ways. And the water that come off the mountain across the road, holy moly. Like, wow. I, I really don't know what to say. It's just unbelievable. And to live through it, to actually have gone through this stress of locking down every couple of hours and walking down there every hour and having a look and getting up in the middle of the night, two o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning for the last four or five nights, haven't slept. I crashed like a baby tonight, but everything's mouldy and damp, so we've got to clean up. I only just put dry clothes on before, first time in a few days. Um, every time I change my clothes, they're wet half an hour later. It's Wow. And now you got these clouds drifting over pretty quickly. Well, I mean, I've seen monsoons in Darwin that are this heavy in rain, but to go for... A monsoon passes over, you last about 20 minutes, half an hour. This lasted an entire week. Uh, an entire week. I'm exhausted. Everyone here is shattered. Like they haven't realised the trauma that they're about to face. Just inside themselves from being tired. Like this has been panic stations at all ends. Just trying to keep everything dry and keep water out of everything and then hope to God that everything didn't get washed out the river. That would have taken... I mean, there are cars down the road here that are... That, they look like they've been tumbled in a washing machine. 
that, that's, I can't express it, I, I can't. What we've just been through is unbelievable, literally unbelievable. Uh, and the spot where I'm at would have copped, I mean, Woodrow Woods was only 20 minutes down the road. And they were sitting on their roofs waiting for helicopters. And I wouldn't be surprised if that was one of them. Fucking hell, people. Fucking hell. So, I've heard a few things. The chopper's been back and forwards three times. Um, the Lion's Den Hotel which a lot of you will be familiar with is underwater. Um, probably drained off by now, but was completely flooded. Completely flooded. And that's at the top of the road from Woodrow Woodrow, which was fully underwater, which is the Bloomfield track into the Cape Tribulation, which just got slammed with wind and rain. So it's come up the coast, it's wrapped around Cairns and Cape Tribulation and slammed into the range here and then on into Cooktown. And Cooktown is not many reports, but I've heard that lots of houses went underwater in quite a few streets but drained reasonably quickly. We're talking tropical rain and we're talking a lot a lot of it uh, and would have been going out into the Arafura Sea I'm pretty sure but um wow well, I'm shattered tired tired unbelievably tired I've uh, been I haven't slept in two days at, at all just the howling wind and the rain and the buffeting it's like it's been, being on a a boat in the ocean while you're on the land with the with the rain coming in sideways and the water picking up very quickly. I, I, I've never seen so much water in my entire life. And I've seen some crazy stuff in my travels and I've documented quite a few things. I mean, I remember when Rock Lee and that went underwater. I had to bring in the army and help clean up there too. And it was Brisbane and the whole entire foreshore there. And the dam collapsed there. I mean, these are massive events, but I'm in the bush. You don't expect something like that to come along and take out everything. Everything. Oh, we've seen cattle down the road, they seem to be happy. And these, these are non-fenced cattle. So they seem to have found their way to dry land. But at the same time, I mean, there'll be crocodiles out there now. There'll be all sorts of things floating around that have got onto dry land that shouldn't be in places that they probably are right now. And, um, and roads are impassable. It's going to keep raining. It's a wet season. Uh, uh, that was just the usual rubbing of the low against the high to create that tropical change but it just didn't happen that way this year last year i saw 600 mil i reckon we've had 1300 1300 easy i mean we're, we're talking 150 mil in an hour in an hour we're talking uh, just unbelievably, I just can't fathom it. You, you can't put something like that into words. It's not a cyclone. That is so much worse. So much worse than a cyclone. Because that, that's not wind. That, that's not you worried about things being picked up and thrown around. That is something so unavoidable. A wall of water coming at you. And then just filling the land. Uh, that river must have been a kilometre wide yesterday. I can well, wait to see it on the news, I suppose, if they start publishing things. But uh, easy a kilometre wide, and that's just here in the backyard. Fucking hell. Mala. I, I just... I feel for everyone that's impacted, and I think 
needed to say something because I've seen some people that are going to be crying their eyes out tonight and just can't imagine walking in to see your own stuff devastated like that. that there are going to be people around here that are a little bit distraught in a few days as it settles and sinks in and becomes the reality, whereas there are other people that have and we survived that relatively well. They locked down everything they could prior to this coming. We knew that a yearly event, but that was not a yearly event. That was out of the norm, one in 1,000 year, fuck knows what. So please, like, if you hear, if you hear that someone up here in Cooktown needs some help just to get back on their feet. Don't support those Red Crossy type fucking mega corporations that'll never give the dollar to that man. Try and find a way to like rebuild their lives for them without using this machine, this money machine. I mean, fair enough, you can have to buy all these supplies through the trade world, but just Try and avoid all that stuff. There are people that are going to need real help. And there are going to be all types of sports heroes and news reporters that are going to try and rape that. And what I've just suffered, my God, the torment of going through seven days of that rain alone on the brain. And then on top of that, concerned for everything else that's going on around the world and I mean this is serious stuff this impacts civilization this impacts civilization in ways that I don't know this is that was intense oh, that's all I can say that was so intense that it was just not funny I mean today we can all laugh and go, yay, because we've got no troubles. But there are people literally called your neighbours that have just started a world of strife. And some of you don't even correlate what that possibly means. Uh, just to have your whole home be taken away by water. And so far, kilometres into a sea to be lost forever. For people in other countries to come across as it laps up on their shores. And this is what reality we're looking at here. It's strewn all through the creek line out the back here. So if you find something, give it back. If people ask you for a hand, just give it to them. Kind of like hard time now for a few people, and those of you that are listening on the news and going, oh crap, put Brisbane on level 10. Put the dam burst, uh, you know, like when all the water came out, put that on level 100. The dam didn't burst, the dam like was completely let go. Let go, like I'm, I'm standing here after seven days of torment and I just can't even explain what we went through. The noise was horrific. The actual noise was so bad, it was horrific. And then to imagine that, and the dark, I mean, we're talking, complete absolute darkness no moon no sun no stars for seven eight days now no no even glow through the clouds of a moon or sun in the background just darkness darkness and, and that light it came through about nine o'clock this morning to, to this kind of lightness where we could kind of feel like it was daytime again yeah, scary shit. I mean, that, that much water coming down on you, I mean, we've got a lot of open space here. So, I mean, 
it filled up maybe three inches everywhere as it's tried to flow away. So everywhere you walked, you were ankle deep in water. And then every now and then a bigger puddle because we're out in the open. But there was nowhere to escape it. But at least we're all off the ground above, you know, on wheels and on legs. You know, the house is up on stumps and trailers and all the caravans are on wheels, except next door parked a little bit too low down the bank line and it's off in the sea this morning with all the contents in it and everything. And this is the sad part. It's not just a car. It's not just a caravan. It's not just a trailer. It's not just a home. It's a life. It's your whole life being whew, thrown into the air and like no one's there to catch you. And that's sad reality of it. So I just, that's the thing I'd like to point out right now. Try and catch these people. They're going to need it. They are so going to need it. Um, I'll do another video maybe later on this, but there's quite a few things on the table right now, and it's just become another one of them. So we will discuss this as we move forward, and, and I just want you to just hear with your ears read the room is someone screaming out for help and they're not so much saying it in words just give it to them don't expect to be asked there are going to be a lot of hurting people in your local communities right now i mean would you would you would be suffering a, a torment like it's never experienced before it's really really sad stuff uh, and this is, oh, I just don't know what to say, the sound, the, the howling of the wind, <laughs> and the rain, <laughs> oh, I mean, insanity. Uh, I was filling a, a bucket, big, big painter's white bucket thing, right, I, I was, I was feeling one of them every couple of minutes. Every couple of minutes off, off a tarp into a bucket. <laughs> Fucking hell. Right, and the only reason the bucket was there so I didn't bore a hole into the ground. Jeez, just <laughs> seven days straight. I just. We'll probably see the chopper go down again. We haven't seen a single car except for the people that live in the immediate six properties here. We're locked off up there. We're locked off down there. The road out the back here to the power lines is gone, doesn't exist anymore. So there's no going out a long way anyway. <laughs> it's kind of, that's a wasteland down there. We haven't even looked. And who knows, there's croc country, so there could be crocodiles coming up the creek. And that, that's the other side of this. Is I mean, it's not likely, because 100 kilometres going that way, a crocodile's hardly going to be swimming this way. But it's possible uh, at the other parts. I wouldn't say here, but uh, as that river flows out, yes, it's covered a lot of land. It's flooded a lot of land. And it'll run off pretty quickly, and things will go back to normal in a few days, but... There will be a handful of people in the community that can't go back to normal. And that's where I just point out to all of you that that's a reality here. You'll keep forgetting this because the news is going to report the next big thing. And the next big thing, what's important to you is your neighbours and your neighbourhoods. And what I've seen this morning... It's like what I saw at Jinjin when I lived there. It's like what I saw in Brisbane when I lived there. It's Lismore. I and mean, there's a savage. Water is something that is a very hard thing to deal with. Uh, wind is very hard. Hurricanes and cyclones. You see hurricanes in America lift houses off the ground. Uh, and that's some serious wind. If you were to equate what we went through last night 
to something, that's what I'd equate it to. But not with wind, with water. I mean, we just saw the most intense amount of water thrust upon the land that I have ever, ever, ever seen in my 50 years of living. And for this to happen in the week before Christmas, I want you to consider that in, in the week before Christmas. So I might have to go into the church in town and get them to organise a donation bucket specifically for handful families because fuck, fuck, fuck. No, I mean, look at the water. Uh, the driveway is still not. Uh, like I said, everything is so wet. The only way the water gets to run off, and it has, it like pulled it like a bathtub and it's gone. And now we're left with a nice, calm, drizzly, English style day. You know, where everything's grey, sky's grey, ground's grey, and it's not concrete. Everything's grey. It's a typical English day. Whereas yesterday was hell. And I was like, I just can't describe any other place on earth that has suffered that kind of torrential downpour. I mean, I see it in the tropics. Darwin, yeah, like I said, monsoons. I think it's time to recover. I think it's time to get some sleep and have something to eat. I mean, the fridge is... The bread was off. <laughs> We're on solar, everything died. We've had no sun for eight days. We've been living on a generator. I can hear their generator running in the background. Brrrr. And that's costing dollars in diesel and in unloaded petrol. I've been running mine once and then every four hours or so, just so I don't waste fuel. But um, slowly, no, I just got the batteries back up to level this morning. This morning, uh, after running a generator for God knows how long. I, uh, and the sky's still grey, everything's grey. Alright, leave you to it. I, I just, I, I'd like you to. Just keep your mind on the fact that some people lose hard in situations like this and others just don't get touched. And we're fortunate, maybe it's that red ensign flying on the front of the property over there that God saw us in a good light and said, you graceful people need to have the waters at bay. But then others up the road, boom! I mean, the Niagara Fall of Niagara Falls come through their entire property. Uh, what do you say? What do you say? With God's grace, you say, love to our neighbour. We're, we're Australians, we're Aussies. But we don't need the government to tell us who we are. We don't need the government for us to band together and help each other in a crisis like this. And if your neighbours do fall, the government's not going to help them out. It's going to rescue you. It's going to come and take you off your house roof. It's not going to rebuild your home. They don't want to borrow that. They doesn't want to spend money on rebuilding your home. But it's, they might even charge you for the helicopter ride. Oh, here's a $3,000 they charge for a helicopter ride off the roof of your house. I've heard that happen before. It's up to you where you all go as a society, I suppose. And this is a kind of event where I'm asking you all to realise, put your differences aside and help them. They're going to need it. And with everything the way it's going in an international world, to have everything destroyed by water would be one of the toughest things to deal with because it lessens your ability to move forward.
At least you got your land. I mean, that's a positive. <coughs> Generators and peace instead of for a week solid. Signing off. <laughs>